Hi. This week my team is working on a balancing project where they're balancing the payables module to the general ledger account numbers that represent the payables account. Now, if you're doing this on a regular basis, it can be done very easily and simply by utilizing a feature that came out in GP 2010. Under Financials, Routines, there's something called Reconcile to GL. And this is where you put in a date range and you put in all of your payables accounts, all your accounts payables accounts. And then when you process this, it's going to open up an Excel document that puts all the payables transactions for that period on one side and all the general ledger transactions for the GL accounts you selected on the other and it matches up everything it can. Now one of the first things I do is I go in and I hide all the rows for the matched data and I spend my focus on the potentially matched or the unmatched. This report will also tell me what the beginning balances are. So was I out at the beginning of the period or not? And so net effect am I out at the end of the period? This is incredibly helpful, but again, this is if you've been doing this on a regular basis. If you've not been doing it on a regular basis, it could be quite a big project to get the two in balance. So here's some tips that I use when I'm trying to reconcile myself. The first thing I do is I'll say, okay, was there any circumstance in which a user posted directly to an AP account from a module other than payables? And to do this, I can use SmartList to help me out. I'll open up the financial series, account transactions, and I have a object that I've already created and the only thing that this object has additional is I've added in source documents and this is to help me eliminate any transactions with the balance brought forward and that way I'm not getting when the AP account rolls forward into a new year. So I'll click on the search option and I'll start by eliminating those balances brought forward. So I'll say is not equal to BBF and that'll get rid of those balance brought forward. I'm also going to go through and say if the series is not equal to purchasing. So I'll look at purchasing separately and then I may go through and say and the account number is equal to my accounts payable account. Now let's also set the maximum record so that we can make sure we get more than a thousand if there happen to be more than a thousand. Now if you have a lot of accounts payable accounts and they all share perhaps the same segment then you could add, make sure you add in like the main segment and then use the main segment as your differentiator otherwise you may have to do this for each individual account. I'll go ahead and click on OK and I get a list of four transactions and as I scroll through I can see the first one has a source documents of BBAL and this is a adjustment to the beginning balances so that one I feel like is probably okay so I'll ignore that one and then that leaves me with these last three and these are three that I might need to examine for example this one why was this entry made so this would be something I would need to correct okay so that will help me look for all transactions that were not inherently part of the purchasing series so how do I dig into those transactions that were part of the purchasing series so let's open up purchasing and these could be done in a variety of way it's still a matter of using the account numbers in uh, incorrect fashion for example let's key in an invoice and we'll key it in for computer training systems I'll key in an invoice number and a purchase amount of $800 and I'm going to go through and click on the distribution button. So if by chance somehow I reverse these and I don't pay attention to make sure that I, of what type I'm using in the debits and the credits, if I do this and I post this, it'll post through because the system said, hey, I have a credit amount, a total credits under purchasing that equal the $800 on the invoice. So this looks right as far as I can tell but we know that's wrong. We know that was set up wrong. So one of the things that I've done is I've created a view in SQL and you could download this view if you like and we're going to use this view to help us evaluate it. So I'll click on data 
I'll choose other sources and just to make it easy for me I'm going to choose Microsoft Query and I'll use um, the ODBC connection called demo and this is one I can tell because if I were when I'm logging in it says server demo and that ODC, ODBC connection is what we have as server here. So I'll choose demo and I'll click OK. It prompts me to log in. I'm going to log in using the SA password. You'll also want to click options and make sure you're looking at the right company database. And I'll click OK. And now we need to find our view. Now when you look at views in this format, views and tables are in alphabetical order together. So sometimes you have to scroll up and down looking for your particular view. And here's the view I'm interested in, view payables, oop, not that one, view payables distribution. So I'm going to insert that into my query and click next, next again, and finish. And I want to return the data to Excel. And let's return it to cell A1. And all of my data that has been posted, either open or history status, will populate in this window. And so now what I can do is do some analysis here. I'll start by that distribution type and I'll show all of the distributions with the type of payables, which should be our payables account. That would be the distribution type PAY. And then I'm going to unmark all of my AP accounts so that I'm only left with accounts that are not AP accounts. And now I can distinguish what might be problems. And I can see three potential problems here. One of them, this line right here, being the one we just entered in. And I've even included on my view what user posted it. So I can go back and talk to the users and make sure that they're trained appropriately. Now let's populate all of the account numbers again. So we'll clear the filter on the GL account. And on the distribution account, let's select all. But this time, let's unmark payables. And then on the GL account, let's unmark all the accounts and select our AP account. So now we're looking at it in two ways. We're looking at what are all the accounts where we used the AP account incorrectly in this scenario, and what are all the ones where it should have been an AP account and it was something else. And again, we can see, because we completely had that entry wrong, it it's showing up here, so that's going to create all kinds of problems. So this is some way we, ways we can use to identify problems of, uh, between out of balances. I hope this helps.